Episode five, The Price of Life season. In episode four, Joseph went into hell on earth, the Warsaw Ghetto. In this episode, the people whose lives he's protecting will once again be at risk. To remember those 30 Jewish people that Joseph is protecting at his farm and factory, every two weeks he has to ring up a Herr Miller to go and pay him the bribe to keep them there. Okay, he says, in that case, he won't come. So Joseph has no choice but to go to the office, but he knows that something isn't right. So as he leaves, he warns the people there that they should probably escape or go into hiding. Unfortunately, some of them ignore his warning. Those that stayed behind, those that escaped, may possibly have made it to safety into a Jewish partisan group in the forest. I asked Joseph if, after the war, anybody from that group of people ever contacted him. By which we can assume that during the course of the Second World War, None of them made it. But thanks to Joseph's intervention for well over a year, they were free. They were able to dance and sing, and maybe even forget a little bit what they were going through and what their loved ones were going through. And it was for this and his many other efforts that in May 2002, Joseph was recognized by the Yad Vashem Holocaust Remembrance Center as a righteous amongst the nations. Then there's another time he's with his wife, Irena, and they're visiting his sick mother in the center of Warsaw. And as they're in the room with her, uh, the housekeeper runs in and says, the Germans have surrounded the building, they're in the courtyard, they're arresting people, they're checking everybody's documents. And although he's arranged for Irena, his wife, the paperwork, he knows one thing is gonna give her away if they're caught by the Germans. <laughs> So he has to make a tough decision. He has to leave his family there and try and get Irena out to safety. But how's he going to do that? He has to try and get past that police officer without giving her identity away. Luckily, Joseph comes ready for situations like this. So they go out the door and Joseph shouting at her basically in German, criticizing her for being late for the train. And I have to say, it's a pretty genius tactic because who hasn't had to wait for their wife to get ready to go somewhere? The only problem is, Irena doesn't speak German. They manage to make their way down all the floors of the house until they get out to the courtyard. And then the game is over. Five Gestapo officers standing there any single one of them could grab him and Irena at any time. Irena doesn't speak German. So what would you do? In my case, I think I'd just run out of sheer panic. We talk about bravery all the time in our world. And you know what? That's bravery. It's also a pretty good advert for learning a second language, to be fair. Now, throughout this series, we've talked about the different experience that Poland was going through compared to, say, Western European countries that were occupied during the Second World War. One day, Joseph saw something that would scar him forever. What Joseph saw that day wasn't a one-off. Posters like this one were all around Warsaw. 
making sure that everybody knew that for every German killed, 100 Poles would be executed. In fact, as you walk the streets of Warsaw today, you'll see many plaques commemorating those victims. But it didn't make the Poles want to give in. It just made their desire for revenge even stronger. To było straszne, to, 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 było, to było takie, że człowiek był chory, potem, potem tych Niemców to człowiek rękami wydusił. And revenge they did get. SS Brigade for Franz Kutcher, the German official responsible for these mass executions, was tried in absentia by a Polish underground court. The decision was approved by the Polish state in exile in London, and in a daring, broad daylight attack, he was executed in the street. Life was tough in occupied Poland. I asked Joseph how anyone could cope with the sights that he'd seen. Człowiek musiał trochę od tego wszystkiego odejść jakoś. No i ja takiego odejścia nie miałem, bo też się naraziłem i też stałem pod murem i też, i też, i też miałem być rozstrzelany. I, I też mnie los czy niebo mnie uratowało, bo, bo tylko brakowało jednego słowa pal. Yes, Joseph himself was in front of a firing squad and seconds away from death. To find out what happened to him, we're going to have to make season two of The Price of Life show. And I say we because this isn't just me standing here and making this film. It's actually all about you sharing it, sending it on to people who care about the story, who've been touched and moved by this incredible man's brilliance and this romantic love story between Joseph and Irena that's inspired him to do so many things. I need to ask you to help to support this project. And if you do, I'll go on to make season two and you'll find out, did Irena survive? How did Joseph survive that moment? And what happened to Joseph throughout the course of the war? My name is Patrick Ney. It's been my honor and privilege to work over the last two weeks to tell Joseph's story. I'm super, super grateful to Joseph himself, as well as Clara and Janetta from the Poland uh, Museum of the History of Polish Jews in Warsaw, Poland. And as ever, to my two good friends, Marek and Philip, for working on the audio and the music and the graphics design for this project. Please, from all of my heart, support this now send and share it on and be a part of season two. Thank you.